Hello guys, welcome back to the Apiary. We're looking now at the overwintered nook for an extension box on it a week ago, maybe nearly nine, ten days ago. Now I want to transfer it into a standard, pretty standard brew box. So I'm just like utilising normal supers, blah de blah. I've been feeding them, I've been checking, I've not been giving them a lot of feed because I know there's nectar about, but I've been giving them about a litre at a time or two litres at a time and then checking every couple of days without going into the main body, just checking the feeder and if they needed extra feed, uh, add extra feed, again one to one. But now as we get into the hive, take off the feeder, it's empty, as you can see. Not loads of bees in the top box, but let's have a look at the frames. I've only been drawing them out. I mean the first frame is normally the least drawn, but as you can see, they are drawing it out quite well. I'm not putting music on this one as well. A, a few comments stipulated that they don't like listening to music, so I'm not going to do that now. I just thought it would fill in the pauses, but hey ho, I'll try and ad lib at my best. Second frame again has been well drawn. I'd say 75 80% drawn. But there's a bit of braise comb on the bottom, which I'll get rid of. Just go on there. I think that's a bigger problem when you've got the higher floors. Some floors for the nationals are too high, and the bees every time will build. Brace comb at the bottom. Well, hey ho. Okay, we're into the third frame now. That's 100% drawn. And there's eggs and cap, capped larvae on there as well. Cap brood, rather. And there's the queen. Happy days. Queens do like to lay in fresh comb, I must admit. If you've got a, a fresh frame of drawn comb, the queen loves to lay that up first. I've just scooted off to find me queen marker pen. I bought that many queen rearing kits in the down season in winter and had loads of freebies with it. Queen marking pens, blah de blah. Just gone now to go and find a pen, a queen trap or queen guard, whatever you want to call it. But to be fair, the foundation is too small for me to put one of those plug in type of queen traps to mark the queen. Probably better off with a plunger type. But hey ho, we'll all say. Now I'm just picking up the frame again, find where the queen is, and assess if I can put the queen cage on top of her to mark her or not. And you'll soon see that. The foundation is too thin to put a queen cage on top of her. And I'll need for the first time to handle a queen, pick it up off the frame. I've never done that before. And a bit apprehensive of doing it as well, to be fair. But 
but we'll see how it goes. I've got to do it. I'd rather not do it with one of my good queens, and I believe this is a good queen in this Alba Winter Nook. She's laid up a storm down there. We'll see how we get on. I'm just assessing now if I can get the queen cage on there, but it's pretty clear that I can't. The foundation's way too thin. <laughs> I'll be totally dismantling the framing force to try and push that cage in. I end up going in with my fingers. These gloves are good actually that I've got, the ones I bought from the Asian supermarket. They give you a lot of feel. So I'm pretty confident I ain't going to crush the queen. So I've got it there now. That's a bad shot, but apologies. But she is there. Yeah, not a great shot. I'll have to work on that. So put it back on the frame. I was holding it by the head, pretty much. I picked her up by the thorax and transferred it. So I was holding the head. Because the legs are easily damaged. So you don't want to pick them up by the legs. The wings, you can pick them up by the wings, then hold them by the head. Then mark them, but... Be careful. <laughs> I say be careful. <laughs> the first time I've done it, and I was very nervous. I was looking into the brew box and then make sure she was okay. They hadn't done anything wrong. But she seemed okay. So what I want, want to try and do now is consolidate all the brood that's in the ten bo uh, 12 boxes of the two. The extension box and the BS Honeybee box get all the main brood in the centre, which is normally where the queen would do it. Any foundation or undrawn frames and food, put them on the outsides because that's where they would expect it to be. The last frame is pretty much foundation, so I'll put that on the outside. Any bees in that extension box all shaking. As you can see, the bottom box, six frames, loads of bees. I'm sure the queen loaded them up first before moving upstairs. Yeah, cat brood, and in the cells of the emerge brood, she laid eggs. It's pretty much the same story all the way across, and you'll see shortly. But she laid it up a storm. Cracking queen, really good queen. The one side, full sheet of cat cat brood, the other side, cat brood emerging, but with eggs in all vacant cells. Tons of brood. This is going to explode in the next 12 days. Absolutely explode. I know the weather's not predicted to be good, 
next few days if you can trust the weatherman, which I don't. <laughs> There's enough bees in there to keep them warm, so we can pretty much guarantee all that cat brood's going to emerge. And there's about nine frames of cat brood, eight or nine frames of cat brood. That's like 16 frames of bees. So one brood box is not going to be enough for all them bees. We've got to get a super on. Stores frame, the last frame. It is good to see you always want to see stores on there. Yeah, I've got food. But I am going to give them more food, to be fair. I don't think that's enough. There's only one frame of stores. And if you remember, we had chalk brood. So what I'm doing now is shaking out that chalk brood corpses, <laughs> if you like. And now I'm shaking the bees in. And I must admit, there was no chalk brood on this inspection. So it backs up the theory. The wet weather, damp, damp weather causes chalk brood because there was definitely no chalk brood visible on this inspection. Now I'm just getting rid of all the braise comb, wall comb, whatever you want to call it. Because when you put a Quinix glue on, it can cause you problems. And subsequent inspections, always clean your frames up, make it easy for yourself. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put an eek on the top, homemade one, so you see it's a bit wobbly, but hi ho, and a feeder, give them a couple of litres of feed, just to help them finish off filling the rest of the foundation, and make sure there's enough food for the brood. I must admit, I do like the first Bex crown boards. I'm, I'm going to make some of them myself. I, I made a few, but I've still got a few little wooden ones I would like to see straight through. It makes it far easier. You don't have to interfere unnecessarily, especially in the winter. You can see so, through, the, through the crown board it's first specs makes life a lot easier as you can see that's a bit rocky that ache but oh, never mind my pen eye I'm gonna put some one-to-one -one. it's got hive live in there as well and I do recommend that to everybody it's a far more braced feed and it certainly helps boost your colony without a shadow of a doubt. I swear by it. I've seen the dip I've seen the difference of having it and not having it. And it definitely makes a major positive to your colony strength. I'm not being paid to say that either, trust me. <laughs> Definitely not. So I'll put a six litre feeder on. I'm only putting about two litres of feed. That'll be on for one week max. Then I'll remove the feeder, remove the eek, and put a couple of supers on next week. Hopefully, all being well. I've got to turn that eek upside down because it's not fitting properly that way. <laughs> yeah, 
These are the English Peters. Nothing to quite good. There you go, I've turned you upside down. That's a bit better. Strap it up and it's all done. I've put the new box in front because there's some straggler bees in there. And now they'll get into this new hive. I'm going to move it over a tad so it's in the same position as the nuke. Just to make it a bit easier, to be fair. I didn't need to, they'd have found the entrance, but it makes life easier. So that's it guys, transferred the overwintered nuke into a British standard brew box. Next week we'll see how the fare. Oh, I'm pretty sure I'll be putting two supers on next week because that coin has been laying up very well. Just put the feeder in front of the hive as well, so there's still bees in the feeder. They're all out the nuke box. Okay, guys, happy days. See you on the next one. Happy beekeeping.